because of the alleged perpetrators. Those perpetrators named by the children were some of the richest and most influential citizens in positions of power in the state, men prominent in industry, politics, the media, even the police. We can only name the ringleaders. Besides Larry King, they were department store millionaire Alan Baer and the celebrity columnist of Omaha's only newspaper, the World Herald, Peter Citron. With the judicial system apparently paralyzed, Larry King spent Franklin's money on courting political influence. Ten million dollars went on jewelry, flowers and private planes. He cultivated contacts in the inner circles of Ronald Reagan's White House. At his palatial homes, three in Omaha and one in Washington, D.C., he held extravagant parties for the influential and powerful. His lavish spending bought him a protected life. Larry King was constantly heralded, cheered, applauded in the news media as the great businessman that's helping the poor people, the black community of Omaha. But King's extravagance attracted the attention of the Internal Revenue Service. As a result, on April the 11th, 1988, the Franklin Credit Union was raided and closed by the FBI. King was arrested, and the federal investigation showed he had stolen $40 million from Franklin. Documents we possess reveal the FBI interviewed many of the victims of Larry King's sex ring, but no action was taken. In November 1988, Nebraska's state government set up a parallel investigation into Larry King. A legislative committee was formed. Its chairman was the Republican head of Nebraska's banking committee, corn farmer and state senator, Lawrence Schmidt. Immediately, anonymous threats began. I received a phone call on the floor of the legislature. The caller did not identify himself, but he said, Lauren, you do not want to have an investigation of the Franklin Federal Credit Union. And I asked who I was speaking to, and they said, that doesn't matter, um, but you shouldn't have that investigation. And I said, well, why not? He said, it will reach to the highest levels of the Republican Party and we're both good Republicans. Undeterred, the committee began their investigations and the money trail led quickly to the original allegations of child abuse. Carolyn Stitt was one of the first to testify. The night before we testified before the legislative committee, I did receive a phone call at home that said, if you speak, you won't live to regret it. To protect the inquiry, Schmidt's committee hired special legal counsel and full-time professional investigators, Gary Caradori and Karen Ormiston. I said, uh, we do not want you to bring to the committee rumors, uh, innuendos, nothing that cannot be backed up with facts. I said, bring to the committee that which we can take to a prosecutor. The investigators found new victims of King's pedophile network, many on the streets of Omaha. The picture they built up was of a large ring of rich and powerful pedophiles. Many named the same men as those involved with the Boys Town cases three years earlier. They were telling us about prominent people in Omaha and elsewhere that were abusing children at, uh, at parties. The prominent citizens' uh, names um, that originally came up uh, were uh, of concern to me because I knew many of those individuals and uh, I very frankly was shocked to have those names show up on the list. To provide the committee with hard evidence, the investigators recorded their new witnesses on videotape. Paul Bonassi had been the victim of abuse since he was eight. He was present at many of Larry King's sex parties. Caridori traced him to the county jail. He had been convicted of fondling his young cousin. Who were some of these people that would come to these parties? 
part of my to get us the character and most of my life. He knows he might do it about that. Media personality Peter Citron procured some of his victims from Boys Town. The kids he liked were mainly around the age of uh, probably about 8 and 13. It was mainly uh, fondling and oral sex with him. He did have some anal sex, but he usually did that with the older kids. The parties involved ever more sadistic abuse. Whenever you were tied up, were, was there anybody else present other than uh, you? Peter Sitkin? Yes. Who was that? It was Alan Bear's companion. Millionaire Alan Bear hosted parties for a large number of sadistic pedophiles. Paul Bonassi suffered at their hands. Okay. Yeah. They tied me up and I had some other kids perform sex on me and they came in and they burned me some cigarettes. Okay, just take a deep breath now. Then you um, cross the Troy Bonnie. Troy Bonnie would tie you up? And he's there. Troy Bonner was found by the investigators and his videotaped testimony taken under oath. Shock when I walked in, there was a, a kid, I would say, about 15 years old, out in the middle of the room. Uh, one guy was standing in front of him. He was bent over, and the other guy was, like, reaching under him, playing with his nipples, while a guy whom Jeff told me was a police officer shoving beads up his rectum. The police officer was shoving beads up his rectum? Yes. Bonner named Alan Bear as the man who introduced him to the sex parties. Alan Bear was a sick fuck. Didn't care, you know, wanted sex, nasty, you know, I don't even know if you can call it sex. Everything, I mean, from just, you know, touching to fruit, squash, you know, huge squash, you know, that big around, you know, stuck into you, into your ass, you know. Uh, heat heat things, hot things, you know, poked at you and stuck in you. But the center of the child sex ring was Larry King. Larry King was the same kind of sick fuck Alan Bear was, except Larry King was more violent, uh, more sure of himself, you know. I got those scars in my arm one night at a party where Larry King, you know, wanted to see how strong a man we were or something, you know, and have his push our arms together and then you'd light cigarettes and as soon as you get burning you'd just drop them down between your arms and, you know, let it, let it burn. You know, and they made us stand there naked and touch each other while holding our arms together and burn cigarettes were, you know, it's on film someplace. I mean, they filmed it, burning, you know. I mean, I would, you know, see him fuck a ten-year-old boy in the ass, you know, until he bled and, you know, just pull out and stop and, you know, push him down, you know, and, you know, and then go out and, you know, meet with decent people. King would also provide underage girls for abuse. Alicia Owen told the investigators she was 15 when she attended her first party, introduced by a Boys Town boy. Caridori discovered her in jail where she was serving a sentence for passing bad checks. I met some guys there that were from Boys Town. And it was at that party that I met Larry King. At the time that I met Larry King, I did not know that he was Larry King. I, I had met him. It was the first time I'd ever met him. Larry King and Alan Bear frequently hosted the child sex parties in penthouse apartments at the Twin Towers luxury block in Omaha. Um, a lot of it was um, me handcuffed with my hands behind my head um, and my feet tied and, and doing different things. Um, what do you mean? Uh, sometimes there'd be a guy straddling over my face. Okay. Most of the time. Larry King took pictures quite a bit during that time. I know it's difficult. I don't know. Okay. Ooh.
แล้วที่จะขึ้นจะเงา